Without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the Ayatollah of ISIS in Ireland, <laughs> the leader of the sinister, one of the leaders of the sinister fringe, Deputy Joe Higgins TD. <laughs> For generations, how do they think it arrived at people's homes for the last 50, 60 or 80 years? Because the working class of this country through their taxes, direct and indirect, built the infrastructure. And that gives a lie to the propaganda and the millionaire and billionaire on press that Irish water is free. It is not free because we pay for it, but we won't be fooled and pay for it a second time, which is what they want. I want to congratulate the anti-water charges campaign in Limerick. The We Won't Pay campaign that has organized these magnificent demonstrations in this city. And the working class people of Limerick for the magnificent turnouts. The massive display of people power that we have seen in Limerick and the length and breadth of this country in October the 11th, in November the 1st and in protests right around the country has left a government that is punch drunk, that is reeling, that is dazed in front of the belt the working class people have delivered and we are only starting as far as that is concerned. And finally the people of this country have said and are saying six years of bailing out crooked bankers and bond holders is enough. We take no more. Now this is very very important. The changes that the government has announced to the water charges regime on Wednesday the 19th of November have to be understood in two ways. On the one hand, yes, it is a humiliating climb down. It is a humiliating step back by one of the most arrogant governments that we've seen in the history of this state. For example, a family of four, over 18s, would be called upon with a flat rate to pay just under 500 euro. A family of five, just 600 euro. Being forced to scale that down to 260 euro. Yes, that is a massive climb down under pressure. The removal to reduce their power, their barbaric power, to reduce water to a trickle. The removal of that is also a tremendous victory for people power. But, on the other hand, understand this. What they are proposing now in their so-called concessions is nothing short of political trickery. That is, political trickery characterized by the cynicism that is the hallmark of Fine Gael and Labour in government. Yes, the amounts have lessened, but only for now. All the elements that the government put in place in the water charges regime remain in place. They have capped the charge, they say, for four years. But everybody knows that as soon as the pressure would be off, if they succeeded in getting water charges embedded, that the cost would rocket and go through the roof. We are not fools. And we know therefore that the figures that we worked out based on people's average usage of water, and I'm not talking about people wasting water, but on the metering, that it would be 500 600, 700, 8, 900 and even a thousand euro a year once these got embedded. That is a burden that working class people cannot carry and they're saying clearly they will not carry 
because it is unaffordable, but it is also an unjust banker's tax to fill up the black hole left by the transfer of 64 billion euro of our money to bail out the crooked bondholders in the European financial markets. Also, dear friends, don't be fooled, I know you won't. The potential for privatisation still remains. All is in place to still make a market commodity of our water, to meter it, to put a price on it, so that in the future it could be parceled and sold off to the major European water multinationals who are just waiting to get their hands upon it. And don't be fooled by the promises of a referendum before any privatisation is carried out, which is what the government says. The government says that in the future, if there was to be a proposal for privatisation, we would have to have a referendum first. No government can mandate the next government in regard to that. The next government can forget that, kick it to the side, depending on who that government is, and they could privatise the water without a referendum. Let's be very clear on that. Don't be fooled by talk of a referendum. Yes, okay, we'd support it if it happened. But hear this. The best, the clearest and the easiest referendum is this. Smash the water charges, then there'll be no reason for big business to be looking to take it into their grubby hands. There will be no privatisation if there's no water charges. Now we have to look forward to keep up the campaign and to intensify it. And looking down here today, this is a magnificent demonstration. This was to be the day before the final day for registration. That's now kicked back to February, more of their trickery. So it's absolutely magnificent to have such a magnificent turnout. From today we now look to December the 10th. And we need in Dublin on that day a massive demonstration of people power to show the government and to show the media that we have not gone away, that the campaign remains and the campaign will be intensified until the water charges are abolished. Therefore, let's organize to mobilize for the tent. Let's have a magnificent demonstration outside all Ireland at one o'clock on Wednesday the 10th. We then have Christmas. Everybody in the campaign deserves a few days well-deserved break. We hope you all have a magnificent Christmas. But as soon as we arrive in January, then all focus will go on April. Because April will, will, will mark the first bills coming out for January, February in March, demanding the payment for the water charges. That is a decisive month because that is the month when people can unleash the single most effective weapon to demolish the water charges. If 1.5 million bills are met by a nationwide, organized, determined and comprehensive boycott, the water charges will be history within a month or two. They simply cannot survive mass non-payment. And that's where we have to direct our attention once we've demonstrated on December.